Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is the highly requested bridal makeup tutorial. This is the exact look that I wore on my wedding day and it's gonna be a really long video because I go over everything in great detail, explain every step and why I did it. If you guys didn't know or you're new to my channel, I am a licensed cosmetologist and I worked as a makeup artist for many years for many different companies before I became a full-time YouTuber. I've done a ton of brides and bridesmaids makeup over the years. So I also am going to share my wedding day in nails, perfume, self-tanner, and a couple other details. If you guys want to see how I got this exact look, let's get started. Hi guys, so we're gonna do some wedding makeup today. I know this has been super requested. So before I get started with my makeup, I wanted to quickly talk about my skincare regimen while I was getting ready for my wedding. I was very fortunate that I loved the way that my skin looked on that day. I felt like it was really clear and even, and I owe that to Michael Todd products. So I have a whole video on my full skincare routine, my bridal beauty regimen, so I will link that right here for you guys. And also down below, and there's some really good coupon codes in there as well. So if you wanna see my whole skincare routine, you can check that out. Next up, the week of your wedding, I don't recommend getting your eyebrows or like your lip waxed like the day or two before. I do it like a solid week before and then like the day before or something, just do a little bit of tweezing. Um, and if you have like hair on your face, I definitely do. You can just use these little things. I'm pretty sure you can get these at Target or Sally Beauty Supply. You can order them online. I'll leave a link below. But I literally just like go over my whole face with this thing. You can do here. Definitely do this the morning of or the night before. Whether you have dark hair like I do or just like light little blonde peach fuzz, everybody should do this at least like once a month. Also wanted a natural looking tan on my wedding day so I recommend loving tan and I use the color ultra dark and on me it doesn't actually get ultra ultra dark but just one light layer of this they have a bunch of different colors put it on with like a little um mitt it's perfect it lasts a few days it's not gonna like get all over everything it dries quickly so do this like two days before your wedding so that you have time to like shower a couple times but I also have like a little discount code for this as well but I absolutely love this brand so I actually went shopping with my friend Shelby about a month before the wedding and we went to the Jo Malone counter and I picked out a few different perfumes. So I really recommend going to them. They kind of can help you choose like a signature scent. They're really good at layering scents. So I layered two scents together and the first one is called Peony and Blush Suede. And this one is really feminine and sweet and light. And then I layered the wood sage and sea salt on top. And this one is more woodsy, more unisex smelling. It has that sage in there. I really like this. So these two together were a perfect combo and I've actually been still wearing it. I wanted to save it and like just wear it on my wedding, but I love it so much that I've been wearing it all the time. And one last thing before I get into the makeup, I did want to mention, I actually bought the candle as well and it was pretty expensive, but I had this burning all morning while we were getting ready and throughout the reception and stuff, just like the whole day. That way I'm kind of like reminded of this scent. So I got the peony and blush suede candle. Okay, so let's get to the good part, which is the makeup. All of these items are things that you've seen in plenty of videos, things that I've been wearing and using for a really long time that I know work well, look great in pictures, last all day. So I've already done all like the testing out for you guys. So you can just, if you're getting married or going to a special occasion, just kind of follow this routine and I can guarantee you it'll look beautiful. So first step is to prime your face. So on my wedding day, I didn't wear a typical like daytime moisturizer with SPF in it because I didn't want it to look bad like in pictures with flash and everything. So I ended up just using the NARS Oil Free Pro Prime. This is very lightweight and it goes on just like a moisturizer and it kind of hydrates my skin, but it gives it a nice natural finish. So I'm gonna apply this all over just with my fingers. Thank you. 
And I like to give each product a minute or two to kind of set into my skin and dry and just leave space in between each step. That way it really lasts all day and it kind of clings to your skin. So I kind of use that as like a moisturizer and then to actually prime my skin for foundation, I use the Benefit Porefessional. And I love this because it completely fills in my pores. It gives my T-zone a very matte look. Because it was so hot, we got married in June, we were outside most of the day, I wanted to make sure my skin didn't look shiny or oily, and this really helped. So I just put it in the T-zone. And I like to apply the primers with my fingers because it really sinks into your skin better that way. The warmth of your fingers kind of melts it into your skin, more so than a brush would. So next up is a light layer of foundation. So for foundation, I tested a bunch of different ones. My favorite one for the look I was going for um, is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid, and I have it in the color NC37. So it's just a very full coverage matte finish foundation it is pretty heavy on your skin so i did pull out one other foundation that i really recommend if you're more of a lightweight makeup girl this one's by urban decay and it's called naked skin i absolutely love this it's gonna give you more of that lightweight feel on your skin and if you're not used to wearing like really heavy makeup this would be perfect they have a bunch of different colors and they have a full line of like concealer and powder and all that too so i really recommend this one but for me, I like really full coverage, especially on my wedding day, so I'm gonna go with this one. But for now, just do a really light, light layer, and I'm going to apply it with my IT Cosmetics um, for Ulta Airbrush Blurring Foundation Brush. Looks like this. All right, the light layer of foundation is on, and now it's time for the most important part of this look, and that is cream contouring and highlighting. So I love this palette from Morphe. It's called 9FC. I'll show you guys what it looks like. It's just nine different concealers. They're very concentrated, very pigmented extremely full coverage. I've used this exact palette on tons of brides, tons of bridesmaids, and also on myself. So I really can attest to it. I know it works well. It lasts all day. And um, the thing about wedding makeup and any makeup in general is you really want to layer different products together, mix different things, use different colors to get a more natural and blended look. So I don't just use like one color. I mix a bunch of different colors together. So for my look, I'm gonna use these two for the highlighting parts, and then these three for the contouring. So I usually start with this one and kind of blend it out for the contouring, and then I go back in kind of mainly on the cheekbones where I can get away with a lot of contouring with this really dark color, but you guys will see. Okay, so I'm just gonna use this little Sigma concealer brush. I will link everything in the order that I'm using it down below, but I'm just mixing those two concealer colors together. And we're gonna go like this. So I just kind of press it under the skin. I'm not blending it out yet. And I do a V under my eye. I'm not gonna put any product right there where the creases are because this product does crease. So. We'll just blend it into that area. You don't need to apply it there. And bring it out. Okay, and then the forehead, I usually do like that. And then just straight down the middle of the nose. Okay, and then I get pretty dark right here, so I'm gonna put a little bit there. And then lastly, underneath where you contour, just a little bit. You can even go one shade darker. Okay. 
so now I'm gonna go on with the contour color. I'm using a different brush. This is an It Cosmetics one, just because I don't wanna get them like dirty with different colors. But that's the same, same kind of brush though. So I'm gonna go on my forehead. Side of the nose. And some people can bring their nose contour all the way up. On me, that doesn't look good, so I really recommend trying this look out like a multiple, like plenty of times before the actual wedding day. That way you can tweak things and make sure it looks best on you. And also what I found works best for my face shape is when I'm contouring my cheeks, I actually bring it up and around right there and it really kind of brings my cheeks out and it looks really pretty. So I like to do that too. And then I'm gonna do a little bit on the jaw. Not too much though. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with that really dark color and kind of just put it like right here on the very outside edges of my face. All right, so instead of just going and like blending this out right away, to give it that really natural look, you wanna blend it out using another product. So your foundation, your concealer, all that. And then you're also gonna get that second layer of coverage at that time as well. So I kind of go all out with this. You definitely don't have to, but for your wedding day, it's gonna make a huge difference if you take the time and use separate products. So to blend out my concealer area right here, I like to use the Naked Skin Concealer. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, Naked Skin. And I have it in Medium Neutral. So because this is really lightweight, it does not crease at all, we can put it under there. And this concealer is just gonna go anywhere that you want to be like really, really light. So I'll do a little bit on the nose too. Okay, and then your foundation. I'm gonna go back with this on the neutral areas, kind of like around the cheeks, the leftover forehead, in between here, the chin. Those areas that don't need to be like super highlighted is where you're gonna put that second layer of foundation. Okay, so just start blending out those really light and those medium areas. We will blend out the darker areas in a second, but you wanna do this first, just so it doesn't all blend together, like mesh together, so that way you can see the differences in color. All right, so this isn't completely blended out, but we have a good start. Now we can start blending out the darker areas. And to do that, I'm using a darker foundation. And I actually first tried this look the day of my bridal shower, and I absolutely loved how it came out. And using this foundation was just on accident because I didn't have a darker foundation. So I just went and grabbed one of my sisters, the darkest one she had, and it was the L'Oreal True Match W7 and I ended up loving it. It was perfect so I went and bought it to use for my wedding day and it's really nice. If you guys are kind of on a budget and you wanna get something to replace this, you could just get another color of this, like get a few different colors. It's very cheap, I think this is like five bucks. So definitely a winner. So I'm gonna use this to blend out my contour. And on my wedding day, it was pretty dark but today it might not be because I'm just so tan but we'll see.
So with this one, I don't do too much just because I like the color of this and I don't really need the coverage, but just a little bit. So I put a little bit on my hand, putting it into the brush, and then it will help us blend it out. All right, so here is what it looks like blended out. Now, on my wedding day, I wanted my contour to be even stronger, so I went back in and added a little bit more. So I'm gonna do that today too, um, just because sometimes more, more is more. Now since this um, concealer palette is very creamy, it does not dry easily. So like I said, I was outside, it was really hot, I did not want like a shiny or oily finish. So I made sure to really set everything well with like an oil soaking powder. And my favorite one is by IT Cosmetics, and it's called Bye Bye Pores. And this is the loose version. I've had it like since it came out. I really, really love it. I use it all the time. You could even apply this like before you do your makeup to really soak up oil. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know that they recently came out with a pressed version of it, which I'm sure, which I've already used actually, and I know is a lot more convenient and a lot easier because this thing spills all over everywhere. But I love it, so I'm gonna use this one today just because this is what I used on the day of. It's translucent, there's absolutely no color. So I'm gonna apply the IT Cosmetics powder with my Sigma Tapered Highlighter F35. I always use this one, I just like it with that. I don't know why, I think because it's small and it can kind of get in those small little areas. But I basically just put this powder in my T-zone and where I get really shiny. Now I'm gonna set my concealer and the powder that I used on my wedding day that I absolutely love is the Benefit Hello Flawless. It looks like this and I recommend getting it in a few different colors. Just like we had the foundation in a couple different colors, you also want the powder um, just so that you don't cover up what you've just done. So I'm gonna use Champagne under my eyes and I would use the same brush but I felt like it might have had some bronzer on it or something so I don't wanna mess it up. I'm just gonna use my eye blender from Bobbi Brown. and I really like pack the powder on and set it. So I just press it and I don't really like swirl it or anything. Okay. This powder is very full coverage and it has a very natural finish. It's not too matte, so it's perfect. I do that because I'm trying to get in the little creases. <laughs> Doesn't look good, but it works. Okay. I'll go in here. Definitely would be quicker to use a bigger brush. Just don't have it clean right now.
Okay, and then very lightly to set the contoured areas. Not even the contoured areas, this is more like those medium neutral areas. I use beige, um, just because it, it ends up not being like super dark on me. So I just kind of like, go like that, <laughs> really quickly. And I love this brush for powder. I've used it for a really long time. It's the Bare Minerals Precision Face. Literally use this every day. It's great for packing on like full coverage powder. All right, so now to set those really dark contoured areas, I'm gonna use my Milani bronzer. This is my absolute favorite. I have it in the color Glow, which is number four. It's a shimmery bronzer, and I know people say don't wear shimmery bronzers and pictures and stuff, but on me, I love the way that it looks. It feels like me, that's what I feel confident in, and that's what's most important, and it ends up looking fine in pictures. So I love this, and to put it on, I love using my Bobbi Brown bronzer brush. So I kind of lay the brush in it on the side like this, and that way you can like contour with it. And this is a pretty light bronzer, and it also doesn't like, it can never look heavy when it's on, so you can use a lot of product and you can layer it a lot. So now that we did the Bye Bye Pores and we did the Hello Flawless Powder, our skin is not gonna get shiny, it's not gonna get oily. So that's why you wanna add in those shimmery products to kind of bring your skin back to life and make it look like you're a glowing bride. You know, you don't wanna look too flat, but you don't wanna look oily. So there's kind of an in-between there. And this is what I do. And all over the neck. Definitely take your time. If you're doing your own makeup for your wedding, take your time. I take, I give yourself about an hour, if not longer. Okay, and then, like I said earlier, I really like to layer products, use more than one. So I do use two bronzers. It's just gonna give you that more custom look. It's gonna look better. Just trust me, it might seem like overkill or like too much, but it really, like you guys can see from pictures from my wedding day, it did not look like too much. It really didn't, so. And this is exactly what I did. Um, the Becca Shimmery and Skin Perfector in Blushed Copper. It's kind of like a rose gold bronzer. And this one is super shimmery. It's gorgeous. And I definitely do not use too much of this. I have a really light hand. And I just kind of like to apply it to the high points of the contour, if that makes sense. So kind of right there on my forehead. And then just kind of like at the back of my cheekbones where the bronzer begins to kind of blend it into my hairline. And I do like the way this looks like down the middle of my nose. So just make sure to kind of go back in between each step to make sure you really blend things out, you like the way it looks, just take your time. Okay, so I am gonna go in with my Anastasia contour kit just to further enhance the contour of my cheekbones. I feel like that's the area where you can really get away with going darker and darker and it doesn't look bad. So I'm gonna go in with the darkest color. I don't know what it's called, if you guys probably know. Um, and I'm gonna just use a little angled brush. This one is from Marc Jacobs. Not too much, but just a little bit. My hair um, was down on my wedding day, so this was mainly covered, but I just like the way that it looks. So that's all I use that for. If you don't have this, you definitely don't need it. I just like to, I don't put too much of that shimmery bronzer like right here. So it's best to go in with a matte one, I think right there and um, I just like that palette, but you can use any dark, dark powder or dark matte bronzer. Next, it's time for blush and highlighter, which are two of my favorite steps, and I've been obsessed with these bl uh, brushes lately to apply my blush and highlighter. They're from SL Miss Glam. She's one of my friends, and she started her own business. Um, she's mainly on Instagram, so I will leave her Instagram and her store below, but first of all, 
They're really cute and they're like adorable pink brushes, but they're really good quality too. And they're like the perfect size. So I use these all the time and I'm gonna use them today. So for my blush, I'm gonna use the NARS and the color Deep Throat. I have loved this blush for a long time. It's a peachy, pinky color with a little bit of gold shimmer, but it's very subtle. It's not too in your face, but it does give you just enough color. So I'm gonna apply that. And I like to apply it kind of lower on my cheekbones and bring it back. So I'm just doing light little layers and building up the blush. I keep it low because I really want that highlight to pop. And it's definitely not like a white highlight. I didn't go too light, but I still want it to, to stand out, but not like in a white clownish way. So you guys will have to test out different colors to see what works for you. Now to blend my blush and with my bronzer and contour, I love to use this powder from Bobbi Brown. It's one of her shimmer bricks in the color bronze. So I use the light few colors to do on the top of my blush and the dark few to like on the bottom where my contour is. So you guys will see what I mean. So I'm gonna go in with that same brush in the top few colors there. And kind of just go on the top of my blush. And then the dark and then right there. Since we're so matte, we have to bring back that glow and you have to use a few products to really do that. So I think that looks good. For highlighting, I like to, again, layer different products to get that custom look, the look that I really like. And I found out what I liked by trying this and playing with this look over and over again, trying out new products. So I really recommend that you guys try things out. Um, I was engaged for a year and a half, so I had a long time to play with things. And the first highlighter that I used is the Naked Illuminated. It's the original one. They have two colors. This one is way better than the bronzy one. So it's like shimmery, champagne. It's more of a cool tone, um, which is what I like my highlighters to be. I like my bronzers and my skin to look really warm. But when it comes to my highlighter, on me, a cool tone looks best. I don't know why, it just does. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of this kind of all over the normal areas that you highlight. So I'm just gonna use this brush again. And this product is very like loose. It's not creamy at all. It's very powdery. So you kind of have to be careful with it and just kind of like lay it on. And with highlighter, be very careful where you put it because it's kind of hard to like reverse it. So I'm like having a very light hand with it. I love the way this looks down the center of my nose. So I make sure to do that. And above the lip a little bit. And then just blend it. So you could totally stop there, but I do add one more highlighter at the top of my cheekbones to give it a really like wet and glowy look. This highlighter is much more creamy, so it does do that for you. So this is the ColourPop and the shade Spoon. And it's kind of hard to tell from the package what it looks like, but it's really pretty. It does give you that really glowy look. So I apply this pretty much just to my cheekbones. Once it gets in the forehead, it looks a little too cool toned and it almost gives like a white cast. So I don't really like to apply it there, especially when you're tan. This is like super pigmented. Okay, so I'm just kind of blending that out and we are done with the face. Now we just have the eyes and the lips, which are really simple really quick. So first step for the eyes is to prime. Because I have eyelash extensions, I picked up this one from Mally Beauty almost a year ago and it's just their shadow base. I really like it. It's basically just a concealer, but it's very creamy. It's very tacky. So shadow does adhere to it very well. I also love the benefit Stay Don't Stray, but I tend to stick away or stay away from it with my lash extensions. So I'm just going to apply this all over.
Okay, so there's primer. I am gonna set it with a little bit of that um, light benefit powder from earlier just so it doesn't like crease. Just real quickly. After priming, your next step is shadow. You can do whatever you want here. I recommend trying out a couple different looks, seeing what looks best on you. On me, a very light and bright, fresh, clean eye looks best, especially with my lash extensions. You know, I've experimented with doing like smoky eyes or different things, and this is just what looks best on me. So for the exact day of my wedding, I only used one eyeshadow, and it was from my original Urban Decay Naked palette. Sure, a lot of you guys have this. It's a great staple palette to have in your collection. And I used Half Baked, which is just a very shimmery, warm toned brown gold color, like a bronzy gold. And you can buy this shadow separately. If you don't have the Naked palette, you can just buy this one color or any gold or bronzy color that you like. Um, I did want to recommend the ColourPop shadows because I actually use these a lot lately and I hadn't really gotten too into them at the time of my wedding, but if I had, I might have actually used this color Lovely instead of the Half Baked. It's a very pretty color. I wear this in almost every video lately. It's a very light champagne almost white color with a lot a lot of shimmer and i love these because they're like a cream powder like you can't tell if it's a cream or a powder and that's the look i was actually going for on my wedding day so i probably would have used one of these if i would have kind of been more into it um i also really like the color amaze if you want something a little bit more rose gold bronzy it's really really pretty and if you want something a little bit more warm toned, a little bit more smoky, the color Game Face is gorgeous. And these are so simple. You can just apply it right with your finger, right to the eye, very quick eye look. So if I would have had these around, I would have used those, but I used the Half Baked. I love the way it came out. And um, I'm gonna show you kind of how I used it, just in case you don't have the ColourPop ones or whatever, you can kind of turn this into a cream-like shadow. So you're gonna need a small little concealer shadow brush. This one is from Sigma. It's the E58. Okay, it's just a little flat brush. And you're gonna want some water or some, just kind of spray to spray on the shadow and the brush. So I love the L'Oreal Makeup Extender Setting Spray. I use this all over my face, but it's perfect for this step as well. So we're just going to put the shadow on the brush. And this will kind of like ruin your shadow, so just keep it to like the corner that you can always know like that's where you use it. And really pack it on that brush. And then lightly mist the brush with the spray. Okay, and then just apply it to your lid. So if you can kind of tell, it gives it that creamier look. All right, so I kind of just put it all over the lid. I do bring it up into the crease a little bit just because I want it to be seamless, but it's not too um, perfect or anything. And the reason why I'm doing this step and making it a cream shadow is because I had the lash extensions and a really powdery shadow just gets all in them. It's really hard to get it out, it's just a pain. So for me, cream shadows work best. So this is kind of a way to transform any of your cream shad or any of your powder shadows into a cream shadow. And it also just stands out more and makes it look a little bit more like metallic. So that was all I did for shadow, but I do want this look to be more like that monochromatic. I want it to all flow together. So to not contour our eyes, it wouldn't work. So you need to kind of go back in with a bronzer and blend this area. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just gonna go back in with this contour kit and um, kind of mix a little bit of these darker colors and a very fluffy brush. 
Mm. I'm going to use the Tapered Blending E35 from Sigma. Just like that and then just kind of blend the edges of that gold. Just because we don't want any harsh lines or anything. Just like that. I did not any I did not apply any shadow or anything to my lower lashes. I just tried it for the first time the day of my bridal shower. I ended up loving it, so I stuck with it. Uh, and I actually just remembered that I did use one more shadow from this palette, and it was um Virgin, the first one, to kind of give myself a highlight under my brow bone in, in the inner corner. Um, and you could definitely use the color Naked or Buck in your crease instead of a bronzer. And as you can tell, I've definitely used these two colors, but they don't look the best on me. Um, for me, warm tone bronzers look the best. Same goes for my eyes, that warm tone crease color. So that's why I stuck with the Anastasia. It has that more like yellowy, bronzy undertone. If you can do something more cool toned, more gray toned, that's perfect. Use this, it's probably a little bit simpler, but that's just what looks best on me. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that virgin color. That's good. That then I usually use just a liquid liner. This one is from Stila and I really like it. So any black gel or um, liquid liner will be perfect. And I'm just gonna do a thin line and a pretty thick cat eye. And by thick, I like actually the width of it, I don't bring it out too far, but just make it a thick line towards the outer corner that's gonna lift your eyes and look really pretty. All right, so there is the liner. I did thin in the outer corners and worked my way to a pretty thick wing. Okay, so from here, I'm gonna spray the L'Oreal Makeup Setting Spray. I wanna do this before mascara just because mascara could tend to go kind of like on your eyelid or down here, and I don't want it to be like set in place like that. So spray this first. Urban Decay makes a good one, Scandinavia, but this one to me works just as well, and it's like half the price, so I really like this one. This is just gonna help your makeup last all day. Okay, so I'm gonna go to brows now and um, I use the Anastasia Brow Wiz in the color brunette, no, dark brown. So just kind of brush your eyebrows out. And I don't use too much, I just kind of carve out underneath. And then lashes. So I have lash extensions and I actually just got them filled like a few days ago. So they're pretty thick right now. And on my wedding day, you know, the lady that does them knew I was getting married. So she took a lot of time on them and she put a lot more than like normal. And she really like, I had really thick lashes. So I did not feel the need to wear any fake lashes. Just I just layer on mascara. Sometimes with my lash extensions, I don't wear mascara, but I found that when I do, I like the look of them better. So I later on, layered on a ton of mascara, but on the day of my bridal shower, I did wear false lashes and looking back in pictures, I liked the way that looked better, even though I still had the extensions. Just that extra bit of lash made my eyes pop a lot more, I think. So I'm gonna show you guys you know exactly what I did on that day. Keep in mind, I did not wear extra extensions in our, on my actual wedding day, but looking back, I wish I would have. So these are the ones that I used on my bridal shower day, and they're by Eyelore, and they're the Pro Lash Individuals, and um, they come in short length, medium length, and full length, all in one pack. So you just pick it up like this with your tweezer, and just lay it down. 
It's gonna be kind of hard to look in the mirror and show you guys, but I'll try my best. Okay. And that's another reason why I like individuals is because you don't have to like press them on or move them around. You literally just lay them where you want it and it stays. Okay, so here is kind of what it looks like with the individuals on. I didn't do as much as I did um, the day of the shower, but I did about that much. So I, I definitely would add more just for the sake of the video. I think you guys kind of get the picture. So I'm gonna move on to lips and then we are done. For my lip combo on my wedding day, I wore the Milani Spice Lip Liner. It's a neutral rosy color. I wore Gerard Cosmetics Rodeo Drive lipstick. It's a pinky rosy color. I put Gerard Cosmetics Nude in the center of my lips to make them look a little fuller. It's a nudie peach color. And then for lip gloss, I added this one from Sally Beauty Supply. The brand is called Real Colors Lip Fury Plumping Gloss in the shade Troll Lip. Looks like this. T-R-O-L dash lip, L-I-P. And I love this gloss because it's not sticky at all. It's not gooey, it doesn't get on anything. So I like that combo. But I'm gonna put that one on today because that's what I wore and that's the color that I like. I would not recommend wearing that. I had planned on wearing a Makeup Forever lip liner, like their 24 hour one or whatever that lasts all day, but I lost it and I couldn't find it and I didn't think it'd be a big deal, but my lipstick wore off so fast. The Milani lip liner, they're pretty and I love them, but they don't last all day. Neither do the Gerard lipsticks. Again, I love the color, but they just don't last. So on a normal day when I can reapply, it's no big deal. But I didn't have time to reapply. I wasn't like carrying a purse with me. So I would definitely do like a liquid lipstick or like a liner that lasts all day. So that's lip liner, the Rodeo Drive all over. And then the nude on top. And this lip gloss is like $3. It's so good. All right, so I went ahead and curled my hair while my little lash glue dried. But I'm gonna go ahead and add some mascara to my lashes now. The one that I'm loving lately is from Too Faced. It's the Better Than Sex Mascara. So I'm gonna just apply a little bit of that and then we are complete. And um, I definitely recommend getting the lash extensions. I really, really love them. Even though my wedding is over, I don't wanna take them off. So they were a definite plus. And especially like on the honeymoon, it was nice just feeling like made up for the day already. Um, I didn't apply any to the bottom because I like that kind of like open look. So this is the final look. You see? Mm -hmm. So I really hope that you guys like it, that it gave you some tips, some ideas, and some inspiration. That's really why I put together this whole series is because when I first got engaged, I wanted some tips and I wanted some help and I couldn't find anything on YouTube. So I thought, I'll go ahead and make that for other people that are engaged, planning their wedding, or maybe going to a wedding, or they're in a wedding, just to give you guys some, some inspiration and also some like a look into what to expect. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this series. I'm not ending it. I'm gonna continue with the series. I have a lot more things I wanna talk about, but I know this particular video was very highly requested, so I hope that you enjoyed it. I don't have my nails done today, but for the day of my wedding, I had acrylics and I had shellac on top. I can't give you the exact name because the woman that did my nails mixed a few different colors together, but I just asked for a sheer white. So you guys can ask your nail person for that. I did the same thing on my toes. I ended up loving it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this very long video, probably my longest video ever. Thank you so much for watching till the end if you did, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.